Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I'm dressed up for a very special occasion. I recently got to attend Anime Expo to join up with the folks from RGG in Japan to host the first ever RGG panel. Um, I got to meet Taka Kuroda, the Japanese actor for Kiryu, the Kiryu, just straight up. Uh, his normal speaking voice is just Kiryu. It's pretty awesome. And I just had, I mean, I'm having the time of my life right now. And I just kind of wanted to share what that experience was like. Uh, Anime Expo for our panel was on July 2nd. And uh, I remember being a little nervous, obviously. I got this bespoke suit made specifically for Anime Expo and beyond. This is all like literally handcrafted. I, I set this up like a month ago for them to make this. And even then, it had to be a bit of a rush job. But I sent the folks who made my suit, you know, pictures of Kiryu, and they found like this really nice like silk material and the jacket. I remember like picking out the fabric, and it was like spending way too long on the character creator, where I just spent freaking hours just looking at, you know, pictures of Kiryu from the games and making sure that the fabric matched the tone of the suit exactly. They measure me and everything. So this suit was tailor made, and it cost a you know a pretty penny as bespoke suits tend to do uh but so worth it because i'm obviously going to use it for future events and whatnot and but yeah no i dressed up on july 2nd went over to anime expo to the la convention center and uh, one of the first things we did was we decided to get lunch together it was like around at 12 p.m i remember arriving an hour early at 11 a.m i didn't want to be late and uh you know i i was definitely getting some butterflies in my stomach but you know, I, I I was very curious to see how this was going to go and, you know, how it was going to be to interact with the folks in Japan. And then 12 p.m. arrived and um, we all sort of gathered in the lobby. We shook hands. We, you know, respectfully bowed to each other. And Take Kuro, I remember seeing him come up and, man, he is freaking tall. He, I'm 5'6". Six. He's six foot tall. Uh, and he was also wearing these shoes that made him even taller. So, you know, he was just, you know, like towering over me, but he had this very gentle and respectful demeanor that immediately put me at ease. He just kind of very softly bowed and said, you know, Taka Kuroda this, uh, and uh, I shook his hand and I bowed, and um, I just expressed uh, just uh, how stylish he looked. Man, the, the, this man has drip for days. And, uh, you know, he had this big smile on his face and everyone was just saying hi. I got to say hi to uh, Sakamoto-san, the general director at RGG. And something that I had prepared were these gifts, uh, these jacket patches. I actually made a Kiryu dragon tattoo patch for my leather jacket, and I made one for Kuroda-san as well with his name inscribed on the rectangle uh, on the uh, tattoo, and also made an RGG patch for Sakamoto-san. And I handed those over, and uh, it was just like a nice little exchange. After that, it was a little quiet and awkward because of the language barrier, and I also didn't want to bother the folks in Japan and want to bother Kuroda-san and Sakamoto-san too much. So I was just like really reserved about, you know, how much should I try to converse with them? And I didn't want to bother the translators too much. But eventually we sat down for lunch um, and uh, we all gathered at this table. And eventually, little by little, conversations started to open up. You know, we started asking each other questions. The translators just did an amazing job at, like, making sure communication was smooth. And uh, what I noticed was that Kuroda-san was just a really down-to-earth person. Uh, he was very easy to talk to. He was very open about sharing his experiences. You know, I asked him how his flight here was, uh, how long he's been spending time in America already and he you know he watched like a baseball game and we talked about his love for baseball and so it, it was like just really nice and wholesome now one thing that I never expected would happen was I was asking him about some of his accessories he was wearing these rings and these bracelets and I'm like those are really cool I, you know like wh where'd you get those and he tells me that all of those he got from Japan and something he does right there and then was he takes off this bracelet right here. So he had, he had two of them, uh, one on his left wrist and one on his right. He takes this one off, he hands it to me, and he goes, this is for you. And I just, you know, I, I, I was uh, overwhelmed. Um, I, you know, th this is like, this isn't, <laughs> this is, there's proper jewelry on this thing. Like, uh, he tells me like expensive. And I'm like, are you sure you want to give this to me? Like, I would, you know, if you took it back, I'd have, I would not, there'd be no hard feelings if you just decided to take this back and regretted this decision. But he just very gracefully said, no, this is for you. Um, and 
this is now my lucky charm. Whenever I go to do Kiryu sessions, I'm I'm gonna be wearing this. Uh, it really felt like he was sharing Kiryu's energy with me. It felt like he was sharing a piece of himself with me. I told him, you know, I'm gonna feel Kiryu's energy through this and from you. I thanked him, and later on, Sakamoto Sen was like, dude. He usually, like, he rarely gives those away. Like, he told me, like, this is not a common occurrence. Um, so that uh, made this gift feel even more special. And uh, I remember asking him about the successor. And he told me that, you know, I like, how many of these does he have at home? And he says, you know, I, I you know, he collects accessories. But uh, this is one that he used a lot when he was recording for Kiryu himself. And so, like, man, I, uh, if you're if you're watching this video, um, like, I, it's not about how expensive this is. It's not about how pretty. This, I mean, it, it looks gorgeous. It, it, it's just about it's about the intention behind it. It's about the significance and the symbolism of this that really um, touched me. And, um, you know, Kurula-san, he's truly such a like gentleman and so graceful and so kind. Um, he really embodies Kiryu um, when it comes to just his his heart of gold, like Kurola-san just really has that, which explains why he's so perfect for this character. Um, when I met him in person, I really understand why he's so perfect uh, to embody Kiryu. He is Kiryu. Um, and and uh, man, uh, this is, uh, you know, whenever I look at this, it, it gives me encouragement. Um, I just feel energized to really give it my all. And so um, I'm really, I'm really going to treasure this gift. Um, it, it means more than Kurola-san knows. It means more than I, I, I can really express in words, um, especially this being such a big role. And, I, you know, it, it can be scary to, to feel the fill such big shoes. And so this really just kind of I look at it, it, it puts all my fears away. And uh, I j I'm just reminded of Kurula-san's grace. I really feel like through this bracelet, you know, uh, I can channel Kiryu's energy because this this uh, bracelet really represents that heart of gold and that kindness. And I'm just I'm reminded of that when I look at this. I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about this bracelet, but I, I, it was just so unexpected and so meaningful. And uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I'm just I, I'm ah, just what a time to be alive. Like having that flashback in my head um, just just fills me with uh, really positive emotion. So, um, Kurosan, I'm I'm you know I'm gonna give it my all and, and make you proud. But after that nice lunch, we did an interview with this news outlet. That I'm not gonna say exactly what, just in case that's NDA, but they might you know publish it in the not so distant future. Um, and so yeah, we did that for like an hour, an hour and a half, and then um, we were stationed in this room at Anime Expo that was reserved for us. And there we really got to chat with Kurodasan, with Sakamoto-san. I got to like interact with them a lot more alongside other um, guests and panelists. Uh, Kason was there. Jackie Jing hosted the panel, and she did a fantastic job of just making sure all of that went smoothly. And uh, yeah, everyone just gathered together, and we also just, just sort of went over the panel and uh, how it was going to go. We kind of rehearsed some stuff and just made sure that we all were on the same page about um, what we are going to do there. Um, and then we, we decided to take some photos, and uh, I proposed that uh, we do the famous uh, Kiryu pose of him doing the heart, uh, because it's such a popular meme, especially in America, that I proposed it, and, and Kurulasan was more than happy to oblige, and so we took this picture, and that was really wholesome, and we took some more fighting stance and everything. Uh, with one of the pictures, Kurulasan, uh, he, like, kicked up his leg and got in a fighting stance, so we all did the same. And Kurulasan, yeah, he's also, like, really silly and in the best ways possible um and is down to just have fun and so you know it didn't take long before we broke the ice if you will it didn't take long before it, it, there was this sense of camaraderie among all of the panelists and among all the people there and there wasn't this like separation between the japanese and the english it's like we all want this thing to succeed uh communally uh it didn't feel like kurulasan you know he was like possessive of the role he was more than happy to like share the part with me and to uh, and to make me feel at ease and to make me feel comfortable and to encourage me um again with with, with the bracelet it, it's like a symbolism of all of that but just also through his words and his demeanor and mannerism and his openness to just like actually engage in conversation and um uh you know he, he wasn't closed off he wasn't like here you you know his 
he is Kiryu in, in the sense of Heart of Gold, but his personality and demeanor and uh, how much more open he is about interacting with people, like, that's actually very opposite to Kiryu. Kiryu, you know, he's more like, you know, unless you really trust someone, he's very, like, you know, he, he has walls around him. Kuroda-san, he's very chill. But yeah, eventually it was time to go backstage for the Anime Expo panel, and uh, we were all just b backstage, uh, just kind of uh, preparing and... and uh, feeling the crowd, the energy was electric. I thought I'd be nervous, but as soon as uh, I started just hearing the buzz uh, behind the curtain of the crowd and, and just how excited they were to be here because this is the first RGG panel and there were so many Yakuza fans, so many people dressed up in their amazing cosplays and uh, just, just that energy just immediately, uh, it made me realize just this is this is going to go well. Like, like no matter what, people are gonna, are there to enjoy themselves. There's no need to be nervous. And Kurola-san's here, and people are going to be excited for him. Um, so I was just really happy to be there that I got to even be a part of this. And, uh, yeah, eventually we got to go up on stage, and the crowd was immense. I mean, it was just a sea of people. The whole house was packed. And it was off to the races. The whole panel's up online. You know, we went through some questions from Sakamoto to Kuroda to myself to Kason. And um, yeah, eventually, uh, one of the best moments of my life, without question, was getting to sing Bakamitai with Kuroda-san as a duet on stage. Uh, we, we let Kuroda-san go first and, you know, open things up because it is Kuroda-san's song and, you know, it is his character. But I got to join in and we sang together and the whole crowd joined in. And, uh, like, that is like a bucket list. Few people, if anyone ever gets to check off. So, you know, that is like, that was a momentous occasion right there. Um, and I was just filled with so much joy. But eventually, you know, uh, the panel kept going along. I got to, like... Uh, share about my experiences with auditioning for the role and shaping the performance and the voice. And I did do like a one-off, like off-the-cuff uh, line read of the subtitles from Gaiden, uh, the turnaround now, uh, and you can go home in one piece, like that whole segment. Now already people are having their discussions about that little segment that is not an official recording of this, of subtitles that have not been localized. And somebody took that, uh, that clip and like transpose it into the Japanese trailer. So it looks off and it, you know, it, it doesn't fit. Of course it doesn't because we haven't even recorded that cutscene yet. And I wasn't trying to like match the picture. I, w I just kind of threw this line out there for fun. But a lot of people are already thinking like, oh, this is like the official way it sounds because of that. Uh, of that edit somebody made where uh, they take the, the voice that I did there and then they transpose it into the trailer. And so already there's all kinds of discussions raging online. And I'm like, this is not unexpected at all. I've been covering games for well over a decade now. I know exactly what this roadmap looks like. There's going to be mixed reception. It's going to take time for people to get used to my version of Kiryu. I'm not doing an imitation of Daryl Carrillo. Uh, I'm drawing more from Kurola-san's energy and performance, but even then, I'm not trying to imitate his voice. Uh, there are elements of the texture and the uh, the commandingness of, of Kiryu's voice that has to be captured, but I'm not just going from an imitation of anyone. Um, uh, but to really get a, a good idea for what my performance will be like, you have to play the game. So I'm not going to like engage or indulge in any of that discussion. I'm just going to wait patiently until the games come out, and then people can judge, and they'll say what they'll say. I know, uh, you know, with coming into a role like this, 20 years after uh, people have had a very specific voice in mind for who this character is, and also having to fill the shoes of, you know, the previous English voice actor who many people are fond of. Like, I knew what I was signing up for. I knew that not everyone was going to be happy. I knew that I was going to face some toxicity and hate, whatever. Like, I've dealt with that stuff on the YouTube side of things. I've grown thick skin. I'm well prepared to deal with that on the voice acting side of things. None of that has phased me in any way or demotivated me. Like, this is exactly how I knew things would play out. Um, and again, uh, people will see the full performance when they play the games. I wish there was an English dub trailer or something out right now that better showcase what, how my performance blends with Kiryu and the surrounding dialogue and the surrounding scenes and the surrounding context. I just feel like keep doing the voice right now without people being able to get used to how the voice fits with the game and everything else surrounding it, it's just not going to make it easier for people to get used to my version of Kiryu. So 
I'm gonna bide my time, wait until people really experience Kiryu's performance. With all that said though, you know, I've also been seeing a lot of love and enthusiasm thrown my way. A lot of people are really excited to hear me in the game and uh, just uh, keeping an open mind and, uh, you know, uh, been very complimentative about just the glimpse that they saw, knowing full well that it's in no way, shape or form an official recording. Again, that cutscene has not been recorded yet as of today. So there, you've, there's literally no material of the English dub out there, no official material of the English dub out there as of right now, as of the recording of this video and the publishing of this video. All that's out there right now is this unprofessional sample of an unofficial reading of an unofficial line uh, of subtitles that are unlocalized. Um, that And some, some people are going to try to do comparisons. and what. Wait until the game comes out. And then we'll talk. In the meantime, though, as hard as it is to be patient because I want people to be able to play these games right now and uh, to be able to you know, see the whole journey of Kiryu and the full performance of Kiryu, uh, in the meantime, I just have to enjoy this ride and enjoying I have been. Not many people get to be in a position like this. And, uh, you know, the blessings far exceed any of the other sort of noise out there that's trying to uh, put me down or whatever it is. Uh, trust me when I tell you, I feel freaking great from how amazingly this week has uh, come along. And I, I just feel really great about the fact that I get to keep playing this character and keep shaping him. And um, there's still a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm just excited to dive right back in. Um, I just, uh, man, I don't know. I'm just so happy. I, I genuinely am so ecstatic about where my life has taken me. You know, never in a million years that I dream I'd be here. But anyway, once the panel concluded, people rushed the stage to get some signatures from Kuro Asan. I also got to meet some fans myself. Just a wholesome exchange after the panel was over. Uh, again, the, the crowd was so freaking huge. But eventually, we got to clear the stage. Uh, Kuro Asan explored the Sega and uh, the Like a Dragon booth, the photo booth a little bit, where we got to take some pictures. And uh, eventually, we actually went off to dinner. We went to Korean barbecue. And that's when uh, a lot of camaraderie really came forth. You know, we shared drinks there. Uh, I, I introduced uh, the everyone to sam, uh, which is a specific way of eating Korean barbecue involving like lettuce and uh, samjang and uh, you know all that jazz. Uh, but we also just like got to talk and joke around, and we we it felt like I was just talking to uh, just some dudes that I was having a drink with. You know, it, there wasn't this barrier of like, oh my god, he's the Japanese actor. I'm so shy and I'm so nervous. It was just like talking to, it was like meeting some wholesome human beings and having this human to human connection amongst the whole crew. And we were laughing and we were eating and we were sharing stories and exchanging dialogue and just having a re really, really good time. Um, and everyone just left with a smile and everyone uh, just, just had such a good time. And um, it felt like I really got to like meet these people, not just shake hands with them. You know what I mean? It really felt like I got to connect with them uh, on a level that felt like uh, there was a friendship. And so I, I just, uh, you know, I want to thank uh, the folks at Sega for bringing me along for this panel, for helping arrange everything. I want to thank everyone at RGG for coming to America. Um, Kurulasan, for those who don't know, he's not been in America since like over 50 years ago. So this is his first time in America in a very, very long time. Um, and he had such a blast and he was just so uh, enthusiastic. And he tweeted recently that he wants to come back, which is awesome. Uh, Sakamoto-san uh, talking with you was also really awesome. And he's also just a really chill dude. And I also got to meet a few of the other developers and they were also just really chill and really cool and cracking jokes and making everyone laugh. And um, it, was, it was just a really good time, you guys. Uh, uh, they're, they're really, really, um, you know, very polite people, but also uh, when when there's a trust that is established with them, you can tell that they can be really fun and just uh, really wholesome and, and really, really great to hang out with as well. Oh, it was also in that room that I asked Kuroda-san for some advice on playing Kiryu. And, you know, I thought I couldn't respect this man more, but here's what he tells me. He says, uh, Kazuma Kiryu is a gentleman in the truest sense of the word. If you are a gentleman in your day-to-day -day life, it will reflect on and have an impact on your performance as well. Be a gentleman and Kiryu will pour through you. And I was just so taken aback. That that was the most like Kiryu response you could have given. And coming from Kuroda-san, who, 
whose voice sounds identical to Kiryu's, by the way. He like he doesn't like his voice naturally sits where Kiryu's at. And so it felt like Kiryu was giving me advice. And it was like the the best advice ever. Like just just the most like wholesome thing you could say to someone. And and advice like that really shows the kind of person uh, that individual is. And the fact that that was the, the, the advice that Kuro-san gave me really highlighted just what a gentleman Kuro-san himself is and why Kiryu-san, uh, as a result, is such a gentleman. And why that that is such a match made in heaven for Kuro-san to play Kiryu. Um, but also just, uh, I really took that to heart. Um, you know, I, I, I absolutely agree that um, who you are as a human being does impact your performances because you as a person are the vessel for these characters when you're an actor. Uh, just the best, most wholesome advice. Uh, really grateful to Kuroda-san for that. But yeah, eventually the night came to an end. Um, I remember we all just got different Ubers. I just decided to take an Uber directly home, Kuroda-san, to his hotel. And Kuroda-san, obviously, we let him get to, into his Uber first. And I remember the, the car sort of looped back around in the parking lot. And as it was leaving, Kuroda-san is just like... Uh, his, like half his body's out the window. And he's just going bye bye everyone, and he just just like uh, just just uh, big smile on his face. Um, and we were all bye, you know, yeah, you know, just cheering and uh, just 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 uh, communally partaking in the joy that was that entire day. Uh, everyone just had huge smiles on their faces. Um, you know, not only at the camaraderie that that we partook in, but also because we all felt that energy from the fans and uh, like just really getting to see physically like you. Yeah, like seeing it on the Internet is one thing, but seeing it physically, just how many people love the series, how many people love this character um, and uh, just how much people were there to enjoy this thing that we all love together uh, just filled. It really made my heart full. And uh, it really um, motivated me to, to, to just put my all in, in the remaining performances that I have for Kiryu and the remaining sessions that I have. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's these kinds of days that remind you why you're an actor, why you do what you do. What really makes you love this craft is the impact that it can have on people. It really makes me understand, like, this is what makes this job worth it. Forget the money and the fame and whatever. This is it. You know, it's that that connection we got to have uh, amongst the cast and crew as well as with the fans. Um, like that's where that's where the meat of the work is at. And so I'm so grateful to everyone who came up, uh, to who uh, attended Anime Expo, who joined our panel and who um, have been so positive and enthusiastic. It really does mean the world. Um, and yeah, with this suit and this, uh, this bracelet uh, donned, you know, I, I have everything that I need to to keep that Kiryu energy up and to put it back into the performance. So I'll see you guys on the other side when the games launch. And there you have it, folks. That's sort of my uh, my account of what transpired on July 2nd um, when the RGG and Sega crew and myself and folks from the English side of things got to converge and how that day went and... Uh, what an amazing once in a lifetime experience that was. Uh, one of the highlights of my life. And it'll always be one of the highlights of my life. Like one of the best days ever. Um, and I, I feel very fortunate to, to be able to do this. And um, yeah, onwards and forwards. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tale. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, and the occasional voiceover endeavor update stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out